Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. And a happy Thor's Day to you and yours. The Purple Daily crew welcoming our friend Thor Nystrom from Fantasy Pros and Betting Pros. The number one J.J. McCarthy market mover in America. Here he is, folks. What's up, Thor? Not a lot, guys. Man, we're, we're only two weeks away from the NFL draft. It is getting here. What is what is the? We'll get to a... You've got offensive sleepers that we... It's kind of part two of offensive day three sleepers. We'll get to those. We'll do a, a big mock draft simulation. But what is your life like the next two weeks? Because you've got your Thor 500 that you're still doing i presume right like what it what is it like living in this world where you professionally eat sleep breathe draft the next two weeks yeah the for the next week it's it's i'm still in uh it's it's tough times around here in terms of like just it's it's when you get up until when you go to sleep uh putting together the rankings by positions and then putting comps on guys and then what i'm working towards is one week from today on fantasy pros dropping my favorite column every single year my gift to the draft community the Thor 500, my 500 player big board with 500 comps, but it is a lot of work to get there. So, we, you know, we grind through the positions. We're finalizing, you know, the offensive guard uh, 18 against the 19 one. And, yeah. You know, how do you, de- how do you flip that coin? Like, so you've got your, we're day three. How do you determine that the 18th guard is better than the 20th guard? I mean, depending on the position, there's things that you're going to prioritize, right? And so, like, with the sleepers, and we have data on this going back. I mean, at this point, we have, you know, what, 40 years of of testing data and how that is correlated by position and body type to the NFL and what leads to success and what doesn't in the aggregate. So you're looking for some of that kind of stuff. Uh, And teams do this, right? Like, uh, the Packers are an example of a team that love to take uh, uh, offensive linemen on day three that had really good agility scores. And they hit gold several times doing this. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's just sort of like that. So, Thor, in, in my in my small draft book here, I've got what's to, to come. Correct me if I am or, or help me if I am m- missing one. We, we have uh, past tweets. So someone's going to find a past tweet of, like, a McCarthy or May, and he's going to have said something really bad or Im- immature. I've got leaked pictures of a guy, like, smoking pot. I've got my favorite one, which is probably about uh, 10 days away, leaked medicals. Mm. So yeah. suddenly, oh, we're still, we're from definitely nowhere, Penix's the, the, knees, yeah. we're going to find out that they're attached by string. <laughs> so so beyond those three things, because it's already started, what am I missing? Because this time just turns into complete chaos. Well, also the one, the declarative reports from reporters of like, oh, this team's interested in this guy and they're going to take him if he gets there. And a lot of times that's, you know, the information that's getting out is what someone wants someone to report. And so you you always have to keep that in mind. But yeah, it's it's that stuff. It's we're getting, you know, now it it really heats up. And yeah, you are going to start to see some of that and you're going to see some uh, shenanigans and subterfuge by some of these teams that would prefer a guy that they want to pick fall down to him. Well, let's get back into the sleepers here before we do a lengthy mock draft simulation. Part one of this exercise, if you, for some reason, missed last week's Thursday episode, you had Spencer Rattler as uh, a a day three or maybe toward the end of day two quarterback sleeper, and we talked about that. You had a couple running backs, Tyrone Tracy and Kamani Vidal, and then you listed three wide receivers to keep an eye on. Vikings, by the way, probably need a, a WR3 but Javon Baker, Jalen McMillan, and Luke McCaffrey, we've talked about a lot on the show. So let's go through interior offensive linemen. And even though the Vikings have two strong starting tackles, I mean, you're listing sleepers regardless of Vikings connection, but uh, you can always use some extra help up front. And then tight ends. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of your offensive sleepers here, Thor. Give us some names. Yeah, so we'll we'll start with tight end, just where we left off last time. Uh, and this isn't... You know, you have Brock Bowers, who has gotten a lot of attention, deservedly so. He's really more of an offensive weapon and a pass catcher and just get the ball in his hands, sort of a dude. Uh, offensive weapon, I guess, is what, is what you'd say. And But after that, it's sort of a quagmire. I mean, there's differences of opinion starting, starting at tight end, too. 
And then the class, the common perception of it is it drops off a shelf really quick. That I wouldn't disagree with. I do think there is one extremely intriguing sleeper, though, that has been under discussed for uh, reasons I'll get into in a second. But that is Eric All, a tight end from Iowa. Iowa, who oh, sends tight end you, baby. Studs, yeah, tight ends to the NFL every single year. Eric All spent one year in Iowa City after beginning his career at Michigan, which is one of our other you know, tight end factories in the Midwest. The other one you toss out, of course, is Notre Dame. But those are like, you know, he, he went to two of them. At uh, Michigan for Jim Harbaugh, he was like their move uh, tight end, uh, H-backy kind of a guy. And then they put him out in the slot. But he, he just did different roles like that in that offense. And then Iowa, they played him purely in line. But he was still being used as, you know, the, the guy that they were funneling a lot of their offense to. Of course, Sam Laporta had left the year before. So Iowa needed a guy to replace that. Their offense is, is, as you guys know, a travesty. Eric All was that guy until he got injured. And this gets us into, you know, why is he being slept on? In 2022 at Michigan, his season ends with a back injury. He ends up getting surgery on that. There was a disagreement between him and the staff about the kind of procedure and if he should rehab it or get the surgery. All decided to pull the plug on his season, get the surgery. He Later, he said it was a life-saving uh, surgery. He, he And then so then he leaves over this sort of disagreement, goes to Iowa and was great at the beginning of this season, uh, especially when you know the context of his offensive situation before he tore his yeah. ACL in October. Oh. So we haven't gotten to see as much of him, but a, a very talented prospect, six foot four and a half, 252. And though he didn't get to test this year, you know, everyone was going nuts about Theo Johnson's testing at the combine, the Penn State tight end, you know, who had like the nine eight Raz. Theo Johnson ended up running. I, I, he was, uh, let, me, let me pull it up here. A four, uh, Theo Johnson runs a four, five, seven, which was up amongst those top tight ends was, was the best mark. I'm here to tell you, if Eric all had been healthy and running the 40 at the combine, Theo Johnson would not have finished with the best 40 time of the wow. tight ends. You see on take Eric all running away from defensive backs when he gets the ball. Uh, last year, a great example was uh, Kate, when they were playing Penn State, he runs away from Kalen King, who I think ran a 4-5-2 at the combine. And I'm talking about running away like all was separating from him down the field after he accelerated around, just created more distance getting to the goal line. I think Eric all would have run uh, low 4-5s and maybe, maybe high 4-4s. The athleticism plays on the field, and he's a very uh, skilled receiver. That, that's the other point that I, I wanted to make about him. He's been doing this for three years. Back in 2021 with Michigan, his last fall season, he had 38 catches for 437 yards and two touchdowns. You know, Again, going back multiple years, he was a sophomore back then. But I, I like the size. I like the speed. I like his feet. He changes directions quickly. He attacks the ball when it's coming to him. And he'll at least give you effort as a blocker. Like Jim Harbaugh and Kirk Ferentz are not going to uh, have a tight end on the roster that does not get after it as a blocker. Yeah. He doesn't have the playing strength for like power edges in the NFL, but he'll absolutely block people in space. And like I said, you, you at least need to throw him aside if, if you're bigger than him. But a guy that could play in the slot can play some inline. You can shift him around. Uh, you, you saw in the past him being a lead blocker. Uh, they would bring him into the backfield. A lot of different stuff you can do. And, and maybe even a guy, depending on how far he falls, that the Vikings should consider on day three. Yeah. What round Football. do you think? It, it That is entirely dependent on the medical staffs. And this is where it gets sort of wonky with him because you have two different things going on there. You, you need to make sure that the, there's no uh, elevated uh, risk of re-injury or even his career getting cut short by that back injury. So as our medical team signed off on that, they'll have a lot more information on that, obviously, than I do. That Very little information about that was out there publicly outside of it just being a surgery. So we don't know, you know, how invasive it was or different stuff like that. And then the ACL tear from October. How is he progressing from that? Is it going to be a clean recovery? Uh, are, are we past that? But if your medical team signs off on it, I'd be comfortable as early as late round three, early round four. You know, that's kind of scandalous in, in comparison to where he is in the consensus boards. But it justifies it as play on the field as long as, as, as again, as long as your medical team signs off. Yeah. OK, give, let's go interior offensive linemen, sleepers, day three. This is a bin that the Vikings should absolutely be shopping in. They could use a starting left guard maybe this season and a starting center long-term. 
So um, give us give us a name or two of interior offensive linemen sleepers. Well, this is a position that is near and dear to my heart because I was a high school interior offensive lineman. And the, the Vikings interior offensive line play the past couple of years has been making me put my head through a table. So <laughs> we need to improve that. And you're not going to be able to give the draft equity up there at the top. Obviously, that is being delineated to the quarterback. Then the day two picks, you you don't have them barring uh, a weird scenario. So, you know, I'm trying to pick someone here that I think would be, you know, to your point before, a fit for the Vikings at a price point they could actually pay that is a sleeper. And I think I found one that fits the bill. This guy plays center, but also both guard positions. So oh. he gives you the three uh, position versatility and a tremendous athlete with length. Bo Limmer from Arkansas. Bull, Six, like B-U-L-L, Bull? B-O-A-U-X. Oh, oh Bo. Got it, Bo, got it, got it. Got yeah. It. Um, six foot, four, almost six foot five, 302 pounds, 9.8 Raz. He was an awesome right guard at Arkansas in the SEC for two and a half seasons before last year they moved him to center. Uh, and he was been, he also played a, a bit of left guard the past couple of years, just uh, filling in. Uh, but he started for three and a half years in the uh SEC. 39 bench press reps were the most of any uh any player at the NFL combine. And get this, guys, he was the first prospect in combine history with at least a 36 and a half inch vertical and 39 bench press reps. It had never been done before. Not only that, there's only one other guy in combine history who had at least a 36 inch vertical and at least 35 bench press reps. So kind of special in in that regard. His overall RAS was 9.8, which means he's a 98th percentile size adjusted athlete coming into the NFL he squats 700 pounds. That's not included in that, but just for whatever it's worth <laughs> on the field, he is uh, in my notes. I have scrappy fighter who plays through the echo of the whistle. He's one of oh, those types. The echo of the whistle. Sounds the like incredible the whistle. Hulk. Uh, He's sounds looking like to bury you. <laughs> exactly. Wow. He's looking to bury you till the very, very end. And his best thing is probably the run blocking. He is very, very, very good at that. Fires off the line low, consistently wins a leverage game. Legs never stop driving. Uh, he's eased, and, and this could, you know, for the Vikings, something you could be interested in. Easily able to reach and erase second level players. He's adept at pulling down the line. So you can do that fun stuff with him that some centers can't do, but he can do. He can snap that ball and then get try to yeah. get around the edge of the tackle, take someone out there at the end. Mobility is a huge plus. He made all the line calls at Arkansas. So he's a super smart guy, sort of a field general type center. Uh, he points out the pre-snap blitzes. He gets his, you know, uh, the line uh, adjusted and shifted and points out responsibilities. The the only sort of nitpick about him, I, there's a, a couple of reasons you're going to fall down a little bit. The, number one, he didn't stay at the one position the whole time. I see this as a positive, but, you know, this year was his first year playing center. And then that's the film that a lot of evaluators are, are looking at. He was yeah. still good this year, but, you know, not settled in at one spot. And then the other thing is he needs the pass pro technique refined. He is clearly more comfortable when he gets to attack. He loves snapping the ball and just shooting forward and then coming in low because it's really difficult for guys to deal with him at that point. And then he has the footwork and everything like that that comes from an athletic profile like that. So he's always getting on the play side, you know, swiveling those hips around, sealing you off from the ball. But when he has to go back and now he's the pass protector, there, there's just technical things that he needs to work on. The setup isn't great. The base isn't great. Sometimes he can, he can get knocked uh, off balance and different stuff like that. Some of these things are technical things. He will need help with big time power guys, but I think that there's technical refinement that will lead to advancement in his pass protection. The run blocking is tremendous, whether you want to put him at center, whether you want to put him at guard. I don't know about you guys. I'm convinced with I'm the in. 11th overall Bo pick Limmer. in the first round, the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> Bring it select on. Bo Limmer. <laughs> I love this. Strength. Yeah, inject all of that into into this offensive line. Okay, give us uh, give us one more offensive lineman sleeper for now. We can and we can dig up more sleepers in the next couple of weeks too. So this next guy was another guy. You know, he's going to go on day three, and it's a guy with with projectable traits who is versatile. Right. Like I want if I'm going to take a lineman on, you know, in round five or round six or 
I want them, and you know, when you know that you're not picking them to be a part of the starting lineup next year, it's it's a twofold thing. We want to develop them, so we want to know that the, the there is theoretical ceiling there based on the play that we have seen, based on the athletic profile. But then also initially that they can handle multiple positions. I don't want a guy like that that can only play one. You know, for instance, like taking a guy who is pigeonholed at center. But now you have to hold him on the roster for multiple years, uh, holding up a roster spot, and you can only play that one position. This guy, you know, the last guy we talked about was a center guard. This guy is a tackle guard. So, you know, up to probably th three position versatility. I don't think he could handle left. I think he could handle right, though. And his name is Delmar Glaze from Maryland. He has gotten knocked down on some boards because people will immediately just pigeonhole him to guard. He's six foot four. And, and, and an eyelash and 315 pounds. He played tackle in college, but, you know, like I said, a lot of analysts are trying to just shove him into guard. I think there's a better shot that he could stick at tackle than he's being given credit for, and that's a part of the reason why I'm bullish on him. He he was good on the field, of course, uh, and, and then he's got um, – uh, 80, uh, almost 83 uh, inch uh, are, uh, wingspan. I'm, I'm sorry, wingspan length. Um, and then uh, the 10 yard split as well was was very good with him. But um, let's see, last year he he was a right tackle in 2022, then a left tackle last year. Shut down Jack Sawyer of Ohio State, who's going to be a, a draft dude that we're talking about next year. He's played well against the best competition that he has faced, including like Sawyer is an example of a guy. He just turned the lights out on. Um, he to me, uh, on the film, Glaze has fluidity, length, strong hands, which is where it potentially projects to right tackle. Um, if it if that doesn't work out, he's certainly going to be a guard, and I think he can be a starting guard in the NFL. Oh, interesting. Oh, 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 Nothing oh, wrong oh, with oh. that position versatility. Although I do love, I do love a guy that can play left guard, right guard, and center, and basically kick your ass, dude. Bo Limmer, yeah, give Bo, me some Limmer Bo Limmer, Bo Limmer, me. Plus, he, yeah. he sounds like an ideal candidate, Tush Bush guy. With, yeah. <laughs> with that strength, because he'll just barrel through like Kelsey did. I, oh. I didn't even I didn't even mention this when I was doing my whole Limmer spiel. You, you guys know the comp I have on Bo Limmer. It's a blast from Minnesota past. John Sullivan. Ben Hamilton. Ben Hamilton. Oh, okay. yeah. Nice. Uh, the, uh, other Gopher, Go, yeah. yeah, Gophers. First center. round yeah, pick yeah. by the Giants, right? Yeah. Uh the uh no, the he was on the Broncos. Oh, Broncos. Okay. I'm yeah. think, thinking of a different guy then. Okay. The Gophers. Man, right. the, actually, the Gophers had a run of centers, man. Like, was it yeah. uh, Greg Esslinger? Uh, was Setterstrom a center or was he? They Hamilton had a run was there. fourth round of, of the Broncos in 2001. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, yeah. You're thinking of Nick Mangold, Judd, I think. Okay. The, the Jets Judd's are, always yeah. thinking about Nick Mangold. I'm always, I always <laughs> love Nick Mangold. Are you kidding me? Hey, before we get to a mock draft simulation, the other thing Judd is constantly thinking about is our friends. Over at Northern Fire Barbecue. Oh, how, how can I not be? How can I not, I not be? Because as you're about to see, we're talking about the best barbecue playground in town. That's right. Mm -hmm. Barbecue season is here, and we're talking about a place that offers 70 different uh, gas grills, over 150 dry rubs on what they call their flavor wall, which Mackie absolutely loves. Oh. There's also a sauce selection. And that That's, is only a start, Declan. Yep. They, they are the um, they are the, the only sauce. Twin Eagle dealer in the Twin Cities carrying luxury outdoor grill equipment. There also are unique cuts of meat and seafood. That's right. They got everything. Mm. Check out their uh, site right now, northernfirebbq.com, or check them out at the location that you were just looking at the glorious photos of just north of Highway 62 on Shady Oak Road. If it involves barbecue, Northern Fire Grilling will have it. Again, northernfirebbq.com. Check it out. And, of course, if you drop on by, tell them the guys from Purple Daily told you to. Yeah, they're going to be at the draft party, too, providing us a hot take desk in the form of a massive grill. And I believe we will be giving it away, too. So If they bring dry rubs, there is a chance. Mackie will peace out early on. Yeah, I'll get show. you guys through the first, like, two picks, and then I'll just be making dry rub wings over in the corner. You guys... Call me if you need me. Also, a couple other friends that are helping to support the Purple Daily Draft Party, third annual at the Fillmore, Thursday, April 25th. Uh, our friends at Popped Corn, everybody in attendance is going to get one of Judd's Purple Daily flags, courtesy of Popped Corn. All VIPs will get a Popped Corn sample bag. And our friends at Fulton Brewing are putting together a pregame festivity. So the, the draft starts at 7 
And that's what time we go live on the podcast at the Fillmore. But just literally across the street from the Fillmore is Fulton Brewing. And from 3 to 7 o'clock on Thursday, April 25th, they are throwing a pre-draft, pre-game party. Special appearance by Vikings quarterback legend Tommy Kramer as well from 5 to 7 o'clock. So Fulton's got you covered from 3 to 7 in their tap room, just steps away from the Fillmore April 25th before our extravaganza. So we're looking forward to it. Um, gentlemen, let's um, let's fire up a mock draft simulation here, shall we? I want a mock. mock! Let's do this. We have about 20 minutes or so, so we'll be, we'll be mindful of, of time here. But we are going to select the Vikings on the PFF simulator. We're going to do seven rounds, if possible, Thor. So we might have to fly through the end here. And uh, let's see. Public will go. We'll lean toward the public versus the PFF. I'm just trying to get these settings right. Let's enter the draft. So last week, we said prerequisite. Vikings have to stick at 11 or trade back. And that was a fun exercise for everyone except for Judd. Yeah, I fought you guys. Tooth and nail. Ooh. No parameters this time. So we are going to operate as the Vikings war room, the Vikings front office, and we can talk this through as we go. Okay. So let's, let's at least ri- let's rifle off the first pick here and see what the Bears do. Probably Caleb Williams. And there he is. Yep. Okay. Do you guys have any desire to talk to the commanders or the Patriots about a trade up right now? Let's see what the commanders say. Yeah. Commanders on the clock. Jaden Daniels. They select Jaden Daniels yep. number two. Do you want to call the Patriots? I'm okay letting the Patriots pick here. All right, we okay. we want to engage with Arizona uh, you, or L.A. Okay. It feels like Drake May's stock is falling for whatever reason the last couple weeks. J.J. McCarthy's has been skyrocketing for two months. Is that a legitimate? Like, how many teams do you think? I mean, it, I'm, this is pure speculation, but. Up until two months ago, Drake May was levels above J.J. McCarthy in the public's mind. But now it feels like maybe J.J. McCarthy is going to be drafted before Drake May. Is that a fair assumption? Uh, it absolutely could happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, you guys know that that's where I was at from the get. So, yep. I mean, like, I think, yeah. you know, as more people have gotten into McCarthy's tape, obviously uh, he rises. It, it speaks for itself. And then. May he he came in with quarterback two with the bullet, but I don't think as many people had had sat down with his entire 2023 work yet. Doesn't mean that he's going to be a bust. Doesn't mean you know this or that. But it there's a bit more risk there than was commonly depicted before, and I think that's why you've seen him falling in in you know some people's minds. So Drake May goes three to the Patriots. We got the Cardinals oh, great. and the Chargers on the clock here. Let's let's uh let's let's go and get JJ. You want to call the Cardinals here? Let's Just call them. Say screw it. Obviously they could in this simulation they would they would pick and then we would talk to the Chargers. But let's let's do it in real life. We the Vikings might have to hop up to 4 to make this happen. So we'll go 4 and the 11, the 23. It says it'll be accepted without throwing anything else in. Oh god. Let's do it. So we could do this. We might, the Cardinals we, lost their mind. We'll just do it this way. We could probably get them to kick in like the 162. Yeah, I mean, they'd kick in. It says they'd kick we'll in the nice 71. But you know the they're going to have to pay will a kick tax. kick in their entire draft. They're so thrilled to do business with us. <laughs> oh, All oops, right. Whoa, sorry, my bad. My bad. Pause it. I hit the wrong button. Okay, offer tra- offer trade. Four <laughs> for the 11 and the 23rd. Oh, and you're like, no. We're going to offer this trade. <laughs> and the Vikings are now on the clock. All right. We yeah, have JJ. wait. We have nine trade offers for the number four pick. We're right not now. interested. <laughs> well, no, I, yeah, just I, say, I just want to say. Thor is running. I just want to see. Oh, Quasi, make oh the, the pick. Chargers want to move up. That's weird. I don't know why that would be the case, but yeah. We're no, we're we're not interested. We're taking JJ. <laughs> I love. Let me it. go to draft the player here. <laughs> All right, and, and we'll rush to the board. I got to scroll down because they. I, I hate it. I, I, I hate what they did with the grades. They hate I, McCarthy. I, I don't get it. it. They've got him 29th. Well, they used to have him in the 60s, so we're or at least we're moving in the right direction. How did direction, your buddy but, not get this right, huh? Uh, I don't know. You got to talk to him. So uh, there we go, boys. No we thanks. we just landed J.J. McCarthy, right. yeah. new quarterback of the Almost Minnesota going Vikings. going crazy. Yep. And we'll let this kind of play out, but our next pick is the 108 at this point. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed this up. 
I'm going to go to like 100. And then we can... Let's pause it right there. Ooh, that's 50. I want, I, I, my question is, do you want to trade up at all, I guess, once we get closer to 100? If there's a player that's kind of within range. So we'll... Uh, now, we can't really look at the board, unfortunately, because it doesn't it doesn't give us best players available until we get oh. to the 108. Let's let's wait it out. We we don't have a ton of draft equity. I want to I want to say what we got. Okay. okay. We are now back on the clock with the 108th overall. Oh, pick. Look at number three on the board. Bo Limmer is available. Oh, I mean, oh my God. We, Shot the world. This is kismet. Whoa. We we sort of have Whoa. to, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. You okay. Have to. Bo Limmer, you are, are you're a Viking, Bo. Yeah. Minnesota Garrett Bradbury, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> oh my God, Cooper Beebe is still there too. Oh, I, yeah, we're back on the clock mm, with the one twenty nine here. Uh, I, I, wait, oh, Thor's uh, light up, man. Thor, yeah, I, Thor is Thor's like this is Christmas. This right can we? But can we take two interior offensive linemen with those two picks? Because Cooper uh, Beebe is is good. Like I think he would take one of the starting guard jobs immediately. Um, okay, I mean, can, I, I mean Ed Ingram to me is not a lock to be a starter going forward. So yeah, would that be uh, too aggressive to be taking two guards? Well, our needs are still what? Cornerback, I mean, if you want to fix the interior offensive line? This would be oh well, boy, would that? Yeah, true. so l- I mean, yeah. let's take a look at the other. Cole Bishop's probably going to go in the second round. Uh, Jim Nagy, the senior bullsar, said that, and I I buy that. So that he would be a um a big steal here. Don't I'm just going to pull up safety, some but, positions of need right. here: defensive yeah. interior, wide receiver. We'll pull up cornerback. Okay. All right. Yeah, scroll down a little bit for me. Um. Mm. Oh, Christian Boyd. Christian another, Boyd, another big bench guy. press guy. My guy. <laughs> I, I, Mason Smith would be a good value here, but total, he's total boomer bust. When's our next pick? So we have the 129 and then the 157, 167, 177. Phil, will you check that trade offer and see if we can uh, recoup some of the equity we sent out? Sure. It, it, it'll give us the team that wants to trade. Okay. And it's the, oh, the Jets want to move up five picks. See if we can do 129 sure. for 134 and, you know, like one of those. 185. Yeah, or the oh. one of the sevens. It won't be accepted. Yeah, take it. One of the sevens will go. be. Actually, both of the sevens might be. Oh, let's take try, it. We let's get let's both snag of our both special sevens. teamers there. Done. Trade accepted. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll go back on the clock here. Okay, 134. Check on uh, BB and then... Oh, BB just went Oh, to his hometown Chiefs, too. Yeah, Cooper BB. Um, he gone. Uh, Mason Smith was the other dude. Mason Smith. Yeah, we'll fix the... Um, there he yeah, is. Yeah, there he is. Um, we'll, we'll go in and we'll uh, we'll get some help for the d- defensive line and a true boomer bus guy, Mason Smith. But you get into the fourth round, this would be an abject steal. Like if, okay. if that guy, the light turns on, you're you're working with something there. He's six five, over three hundred pounds. His agility scores were stupid, crazy long. Former uh, top twenty overall recruit in the nation. He he's just had some injury problems, um, so didn't play as much through your career there. Uh, what what positions now we uh oh, wide receiver cornerback Luke so we're, McCaffrey. We're yeah you Luke guys McCaffrey know it's gonna range. be it's gonna be hard for me to turn that one down <laughs> I'm just pulling up positions of need here wide receiver yeah. cornerback I would say uh, I'll throw edge on here just for fun yeah. okay throw throw linebacker on here less of a need than maybe it was before so here's what we got a couple okay. couple couple linebackers that we've talked about before Notre Dame's J T Bertrand Luke McCaffrey is is a guy that yeah. we keep talking about, though. He's your guy. He's my guy. I feel like we've come away with Luke McCaffrey and I'm sorry, we percent of the mocks. We we got to take Luke McCaffrey. He's just okay. uh, yeah, he he's a good value here, and we got okay. our extra picks, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna be fine with the other positions. Luke McCaffrey, you and your bloodlines are a Minnesota <laughs> Viking. Okay, the 167. This so is we're just looking all at, players now. We're looking at defensive back, edge, uh, linebacker. Here, I'll pull up safety, yeah. cornerback. I'll pull up, what else do we, what else do we want to see? Linebacker, yeah. edge. Is there, I mean, once you get to this territory with the edge. Interior edges, line still, right? No, we got um, Bo Limmer. We got our guy, Bo Limmer. Start. Okay. 
doesn't mean we can't take we, we do have six picks remaining so we can definitely I mean, we take got, yeah we got a lot of okay so the top cornerbacks here are going to be on this list Dwight McLaughlin from Arkansas Nehemiah Pritchett from Auburn hmm. anyone stand out to you Thor uh, or should Ryan... we just go Iowa punter right now and <laughs> not yet not yet uh, Ryan Watts would be interesting. He's got, he's got a lot of work to do, but he is huge and he is athletic. Um, he, they've tried that at corner before and, and those guys haven't necessarily worked for him, but he's yeah. over six, three, two Oh six with a 91st percentile wow. size adjusted athletic score. At this point, he's going to get taken just on the upside. Okay. Um, but inconsistent and in you guys remember him being torched by Michael Penix in the, uh, co collegiate semifinal game, but he would be a guy you're not going to find a higher ceiling in the at cornerback around here. But again, you got work to do there. So okay. if we haven't taken a corner before now, maybe the thinking would be, let's bring him in, develop him for a year and just see what we got. Um, okay. That would, that would probably be my lean right here. Okay. Ryan Watts, cornerback from the university of Texas. And now we're back on the clock. First pick in the sixth round, the 177. Phil, check out running back for me. Would you? This is half, half this is around where I'd love for the Vikings to take a run. Oh God! Oh, Look, your guy oh, Kamani Vidal is oh, sitting yeah. right there. Oh boy. God! It's, it, from Troy. It's karma. Br br bring Kamani in. We're t we're taking Kamani. I was say, you didn't even have to look at that. Yeah. Specs, this man. this board's falling good for us. Okay, Kamani Vidal, you are a Minnesota Viking. We have four picks left. We're back on the clock. So we have the 230, the 232, the 256, and the 257. Well, I'm going to tell, you, I'm tell you right now, those, loves two, draft. those two late sevens we got from the Jets are going to a kicker and to a Mr. Tory <laughs> Taylor. Uh, so we're going to be taking two specialists there and, and revamping that. But So we got we got two other bullets to fire here first. Uh, have we taken a second offensive lineman or just the first? Just the first one. Brandon Coleman would interest me then. He, you know, talking about position versatility. Did did I bring Brandon Coleman up on our last show? I forget. I don't think so, man. Oh, oh no, so. it would have been today with the offensive lineman. He'd yeah. be another guy I'd bring up as a potential sleeper. He's just a little bit higher, like where he would have a shot to go late round three, but it's probably going to be more like four. But he grew up in Germany because his parents were, or his father was deployed over there. Mm. So he didn't pick the, the sport up until late. And it turned out that he was this massive athlete. Um, he goes to uh, TCU. He has started to both guard and tackle. Still needs work with his technique. That you know, he's early on the development curve. He also was banged up all last year. So when people just look at his film last year, he was playing through pain. That's I think why he gets nitpick with some people. I think he's headed to guard at the next level, uh, collegiate tackle. But you know, or last year. But I, I think he would be a guard. But they, they could potentially play right tackle on a pinch. And you know that he doesn't look super weird in purple because he played for TCU. So it's, it's very important that he doesn't look weird in purple. That, We're back, right. on the, back on the clock at 2.32 after taking Brandon Coleman. So then the – is it linebacker? Remind me which positions we have not hit that we have – that We, we have, not hit, we have not hit linebacker. Linebacker we, and edge? We have not hit yep. edge or linebacker. Okay, yeah. let's – yeah, pull up linebacker and edge for me. We'll just go. And how, how about this, Thor? Some yeah. special teams help too here. Well, we're gonna. That's, uh, that's coming. Yeah, he's those he's last already, two picks. He's already uh, earmarked those last two picks for. Right. No. No. Teams. I'm. I'm saying though, if you draft a linebacker, he can play an absolutely key role on oh, special teams. Got I'm, you. Got you. I'm saying Matt Daniels right now is saying, "What about my coverage? What <laughs> about me? I don't care about the kicker right now." So. A linebacker as a rookie could serve a dual purpose. He might not play a bunch on defense, but he could play a lot on special teams. So got Jacobs. Okay, I think the highest um, – let's just go down a little bit more. Wallace and McGee. Um, I have Wallace, LB7. The McGee kid from uh, Temple is interesting. He's a very good oh. athlete. I, I have him ninth. Okay. Um, I would probably go with uh, Trevin Wallace from Kentucky here. I think. Okay. His... So you have this. You have we're toward the end of the draft here. You have him as LB seven on your list. You yeah. Said? Yeah. Yeah. Like Six it. two two forty. Yep. I comp okay. him to uh, Sioni Taki Taki. We're gonna take him. He's okay. another guy who's a very good athlete. You, know, you guys saw the 6'1", 237, 93rd percentile athlete for Wallace. <laughs> 
Now we can do it. Now, now we can do the specialists. And, exactly. So um, the first one, of course, you have to take Tory Taylor. I, I can't disrespect him. And then we're going to take our kicker with the next one. <laughs> we and just drafted we'll a Hall of Famer special. at the end of the seventh round. We just got That's Ray great. Guy. <laughs> my uh, my kicker is, uh, at least my top three would be Josh Carty, Cam Little, Harris, and Mivas. Okay. They're all all sitting here. So Josh Carty, Carty, it sounds like. Yeah, he Carty's, went to, he went to Stanford. Oh, smart. Probably too. has a high level of IQ and EQ just big based leg. on. Big leg on Josh Carty. Six foot two? Jeez. He he booms them. Like some of these guys, that, uh, the kid from Alabama, um, uh, Riker, Will Riker, they didn't let him kick 50 yard field goals. Like you can tell a lot by usage of any player at any position in, in yeah. college with the kickers. If, if the coach is like, yeah, it's going to be a 50 yard attempt, let's just go for it every single time. It's like, eh, maybe that guy's not going to work out in the NFL, but Cardi, they, they didn't care. It was like, oh, it's going to be a 58 yard attempt, whatever. Send out Cardi. We got Justin shout. Tucker, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The next Justin Tucker. Dude, look at this. By the way, look at this on the PFF. So we're about to see what our grade is. It'll be at the bottom of the screen. But they now have a mock draft assistant where it tells you, "Hey, you drafted JJ McCarthy with the fourth pick. Sure we did. would have gone Marvin Harrison we don't Jr. Need yeah. A mock draft assistant when Thor's on the show. <laughs> yeah, we, get we your don't... mock draft assistant so out it, of here. Oh, overall draft oh, grade. Oh, C. Oh, oh, unbelievable. Thor. No, that's wait. The, wait hold on a second. That is that is Thor. truly scandalous. <laughs> We just destroyed that draft. <laughs> Not according we, to the PFF. Now we have the best draft, young special teams uh, in the NFL. We got our oh. we got our, our star quarterback face of the franchise. We got our boy all the all the the infrastructure help, Limmer and Mason Smith, you kidding me? Those guys yeah, are gonna I mean, battle I'm, in practice I'm, every boy. day. You know, Thor, you got no, two weeks. I trust two, Thor. Two weeks for Thor to get better, I guess. Is <laughs> I think next week we, we go back to the uh mock that, that we used for a few weeks when PFF went to timeout. I think PFF deserves Pro another football timeout. network. Pro yeah. football network. Yeah. yeah. We didn't even overpay to go and get McCarthy. Like this is truly scandalous. We picked up the two picks at the end and that trade down only five spots. I mean, we were Dude. doing stuff. I think they wanted us to, cause, cause their simulator was allowing us to get a kickback. So we give the 11, the 23 and we, we get them to kick back like a third round pick, but I don't think that's what's going to happen in reality. I think there's, there's no way that you're going to go up to four for the 11 and the 23 and then ask for something else back. I so just, they, penal- I they penalize us for being realistic? Yes. Okay. For being yeah. generous? Yes. Yep. Unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to send a, I'm gonna send a note into PFF. After we They're in timeout. A strongly worded letter. They are yeah. in timeout for two weeks. Screw them. <laughs> They're it. out. They're out. So there he is, Thor Nystrom from Fantasy Pros and Betting Pros. And again, tell the audience where they can find your fantasy pros podcast these days too. Yeah. On the fantasy pros dynasty podcast feed, you can find our new NFL draft show with me and Derek Brown, where we deep dive all the offensive skill positions. The last one we did was, was tight ends. So I did my little song and dance about Eric all, but then we go into all the other guys as well. I disagree with the consensus rankings after Brock Bowers. So we, we get into all the reasons why, and then go through those top 10 guys. Love it, man. Awesome. Uh, You'll be with us again. We're still kind of mapping out the next two or three weeks, but you will be hearing plenty from Thor as we get up to the draft and even after the draft. So awesome, dude. Thor Nystrom, thanks for coming on again. Happy Thor's Day to you and yours. Appreciate it, boys. And you're right there wrong. Thank you. (laughs) Hey, before we get to random Viking of the week here, gentlemen, let's talk about our friends over at Ugly Deck and UglyDeck.com, Judd. Gorgeous outside. Birds are chirping. It's springtime. Guess what? Springtime means one thing. Thank you very much. Means it's deck time, and that means a new deck from our friends at UglyDeck.com. Install or DIY, UglyDeck.com is offering up to $1,000 off. That's right, $1,000 off for a limited time. With install, you get the best carpenters. With DIY, you're going to get the best coaches to help you from start to finish. Ugly Deck is on a very simple mission. It is a mission to rid the world of ugly decks. UglyDeck.com is setting up appointments now at their Shakopee Deck Design Showroom. Check out UglyDeck.com today. That's UglyDeck.com so you can turn that ugly deck into a beautiful deck for spring. And speaking of things to do as the weather turns, how about Uh, golfing at the Meadows at Mystic? I'm sure a lot of people got some tee times booked. And yes, I'm well aware uh, in our YouTube comments section how hideous my golf swing is. But guess what? My (laughs) friends at the Meadows at Mystic Lake allow me to play and shoot 110 and look like a fool doing it. So I'm very thankful for my friends 
at the Meadows at the Mystic Lake. You can book your tee time now. You can look like a fool like me, or you can, you know, like break 70, break 80. Doesn't matter. You can go to golfthemeadows.com to learn more. A great course. It's a scenic course, one of the best in the in Twin Cities. It's a short drive away from the Metro. Go to golfthemeadows.com to book your tee time today. Speaking of short drives, Declan's golf swing. <laughs> I think your swing is just fine, Declan. Don't let him bring you down. <laughs> I waved. <laughs> I ne- I just... You you never hit the ball that far in your life. I, I I can't tell you how many times it actually happens to me. We're like, Dex, you're good to go. You're 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 yep. you're not gonna hit them. I, when go, I was go. pretty new to golfing, like in high school, and I used to play at at Pheasant Acres. It's called Pheasant Run at the time, out in Corcoran, mm-hmm. kind of Maple Grove area. And, you know, like you, you're sitting in the fairway, the group on the green is 250 yards away. But in your mind, you're like, if I really get a hold of this, I can run it up on him. And some guy on the, so we're waiting. And some guy on the tee box is literally like, hey, dumbass, you know, just just screaming. And he's right. And he was right. Just throwing up there, throwing up there in the woods on the right side, uh, 50 yards up, Phil, like you normally do. So I have a random Viking of the week for you guys. A battle of Vikings historical wits. It's going to be Judd versus Declan this week. In the new era of Random Viking of the Week, Judd has 18 wins. I have 12. Declan has 8. All time, Judd has 69 wins. Declan, 34. Nice. I have 19. The last handful of Random Vikings, and Judd's on a three-game winning streak. Call Charles here. Johnson, Brian Robison, Alexander Madison, David Blau was a no contest. Well, Napoleon Harris and Darren Sharper. They always yeah, it's controversial. They always uh, controversial name in which we got yeah. some pushback of why did you have to pick him? And because we said because he is a former Viking. He's a random former Viking. Yeah, uh, yeah. He fit the criteria. Yeah, Not we're the moral ex- criteria. excited to launch our podcast with Darren Sharper called "One Call a Week" here on <laughs> Purple Daily. Um, so I've got a series of clues. You guys can shout out guesses whenever you want to. If one of you hits a third strike, a third incorrect guess, you are eliminated. The other person wins. Okay. Here we go. This random Viking has four, or had, I should say. He's not a current active player. Had four career NFL touchdowns. This random Viking... As a senior in high school, rushed for 890 yards, also caught 21 passes for 500 yards, was an All-American, a consensus All-State selection, a Class AA Player of the Year, and was a Mr. Football finalist with his high school performance. You want to tell us what state he was in? Um, I'll tell you later. I think it's I think it's a clue. Like it's a we'll circle back. It's a regional that. clue. I'll Put a say pin that in one that for now. Yeah. Yeah. Take that offline right now. All right. So he I find it kind of interesting that he was an all American but didn't win Mr. Football, which tells you that there's probably some pretty good players in that yeah. state Flor- and region. Florida, Texas. This random Viking has sixteen thousand Instagram followers. In fact, he uh, recently, according to his Instagram, he was recently on a podcast called the Therapy Show podcast. There's like a clip from him on this podcast on his Instagram reels. And the the host that posted this clip and tagged him in it Mm -hmm. wrote this description. Dive into a journey of transformation and triumph. This week on the Therapy Show... We're peeling back the layers of a story that's as inspiring as it is enlightening. Join me as I sit down with the incredible blank player name, a former professional football player who's tackled life's ups and downs with the grace of a true champion. I might have to go listen. Sounds like a lot of unnecessary praise. (laughs) Now, He's listed as a true champion here in this podcast description. Yeah. He did not win a pro football championship. He did not win a Super Bowl. But he overcame the adversities that life threw at him to yep. become, more importantly, a champion of life. Apparently, like a, yes. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of unnecessary praise. Okay. He also hosted, for this past Super Bowl two months ago, he hosted a virtual Super Bowl party presented by U.S. Mobile. 
<laughs> on a platform called Millions. There's like a video streaming platform called Millions, and he hosted a Super Bowl watch party on this platform. I feel like I, I feel like I need more football football clues. There's also I'm just kind of perusing. So he has like a website or something, and there is a merchandise wing of this website where you can buy like hooded sweatshirts with this former Vikings name and likeness on the hooded sweatshirts, which I am highly interested in. Actually, I might be rocking one on the podcast at some point. This random Viking tallied up just shy of a thousand career kick return yards in the National Football League. I'm going to look at our list just so, sure. uh, just so the folks at home don't think I've gone completely rogue. <clears throat> and and we can control F here. You just yeah, you can't go. I just can't look at like uh... clues. Let's see here. Instagram follow. Oh, whoops. Did I say that loud? <laughs> this random Viking played 49 career NFL games. When you Google image search this player... The first photo that pops up is a blunder. It would be, if I were him and I Google searched myself, I would be annoyed that this photo is the one that, that pops up. It's an, it's an on-field blunder. It is unfortunate. No. Four touchdowns. I will say this. Hmm. Obviously, like, you know, 49 career NFL games, blunder. Right. I'm a little surprised, despite sort of the tone of my clues to this point. I'm a little surprised that this player only scored four career NFL touchdowns. A little surprised. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a search. I don't even know if this guy has turned his life around. That's my problem. But I gotta He see. seems to be very happy in life. But based on his football career, one might assume the otherwise, assume the opposite. Can I ask if did, did the blunder happen with the Vikings? The one in the image did. In fact, yeah. Troy Williamson? That's who I was thinking, but. I'll, I'll guess it. Troy Williamson. It's Troy Son of a. <laughs> You got three guesses. You just rifle off a guess. Troy Williamson. Yep. Nice job, Judd. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I thought he had more than four touchdowns. But, yeah, the blunder is it's... It's the it's Denver. That, what would have been a 72-yard touchdown well, pass from T-Jack. It, it, and it's, it's it him looking up, up and the ball bouncing off his up, head. It's T-Jack's oh, best pass. It, it's, it sums up his career. So bad. He's become a, a uh, motivational speaker, right? He was definitely at one point, yeah. yeah. So it he looks like he's doing well. I think he's got a family. and. Okay, kids. But the, his, the first paragraph of his Wikipedia page is literally, he is considered the biggest bust in the history of the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, that's, I was thinking about that today. I don't know why I'd call him that, but he is, yeah, at the seventh pick overall. He's Declan, are you okay? No, I'm pissed. I'm so pissed off. Why didn't you just guess Troy Williamson? I, I don't know. I, I had, it was between him and one other person, then I realized it, it couldn't have been the other guy I was thinking of. I just, I never... The thing that was holding me up was the transformation and the hosting of a Super Bowl. What, like, yeah, I didn't realize that, that. part. I, I, that's why I was so confused. The other stuff, like the blunder, the touchdowns, the kick return, all American. I was like, this sounds like Troy Williamson, but yeah. I, I was too gung shy to pull the damn trigger. It's happened to us all. You can't score if you don't shoot. That's, you know? yeah. it's happened you to miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Thanks, Coach. Someone should Thanks. put that on a Coach Phil. Yeah. So Troy canvas. has Troy has hoodies with his face on them. Yeah, it's like Troy Williamson, and like a little purple Give me that jersey. Link. If you go to his Instagram, he's got a little link tree, and you can. A, I you might can actually buy one of those. Yeah, be, it'd be amazing. Maybe we can get him to show up at the draft party in a couple weeks at the Fillmore. <laughs> go along, Troy. No. Okay. <laughs> Troy, catch I this. Got, catch I this got, microphone. I got... Oh God. Whoops. 
All right. That's mean. Okay, that's a Declan's wrap on mad. Purple Daily. We're mocking Daily Troy Vikings Entertainment, where we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. We'll see you for Feedback Friday tomorrow.